Hello and welcome to Social Media Ministries. My name is Spencer Kaufman. We're in the middle of a sermon series about uh, the earth at the time of Noah and how all of this stuff was going on and everything was changing and that's really the basis for our world today. So, so, so far we've spoken about how the earth is young and really it's about 6,000 years old from the time of life on earth until now. And uh, if you don't believe that, uh, you can check it out. It's in the Bible. You can also watch the sermon that we spoke about that. Uh, the next thing we spoke about was the water in the atmosphere. There was water, a blanket of water around us, and that's what helped shield us from the harmful rays of the sun. We also lived in a hyper-oxygen chamber, which enabled us to live much longer. That's why the people in the Old Testament, or one of the reasons why, they lived so much longer than people of today. could also account for the large size of dinosaurs or terrible lizards that walked around. Then, last week, we spoke about how dinosaurs and humans existed on the earth at the same time. We talked about three of them that are mentioned all over the Bible, the dragon, the leviathan, and the behemoth. Those are some great creatures, uh, really cool creatures, and it's really neat that they are described all over in this great book and that we can really see uh, in history also, and in the Bible, that they correspond and that they existed and how uh, really, really incredible these creatures were and are if any of them still exist today. Unlikely, but uh, they could. You never know. And so today, we're talking about the first rain. Uh, one other side note is if you haven't seen those other uh, messages, check them out in a card right up here if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, navigate to our YouTube channel and find the playlist that has all of these messages inside it. You can watch them, you can share them with your friends, you can help us reach more people through your social media networks. So do that, it would be awesome. Uh, we thank you for supporting us in that way. So today we're talking about the first rain. What does that mean? Well, uh, everything is a first at some point, and uh, one day, all of a sudden, it started raining for the first time. When was this? Uh, we're talking late, late, you know, in the Bible. Not thousands of years, but it didn't rain all the way up until Noah. Noah was the first rain. When was this? How do we know? Well, let's dive into it right here. So before the Great Flood, which is the flood of Noah, uh, if you don't believe in the Great Flood, then you got to do some more research. A lot of major religions have it in their books, some type of a worldwide flood. Uh, the fossil record indicates that many, many animals died at one time. Uh, so the flood, uh, it's in the Bible, which we preach from the Bible. This is what we believe here at Social Media Ministries. And so we're going to go from there. So before this flood, it never rained on the earth, ever. It didn't rain. Why? All the water was up in the atmosphere. Anytime the land became dry or, or crops needed water, Cain and Abel, you know, this is before the flood, Adam and Eve before the flood, anytime... The, the ground needed water, God simply opened it up and springs came up and watered the earth. It's kind of a cool thing to see. We don't really see that today. The only place that we see springs now are in lakes. It's spring fed. So like really water just starts coming out of the ground and feeds uh, the lake or the pond or whatever it is. Uh, sometimes you can see geysers and uh, like Old Faithful and it shoots up water or something like that. Uh, that could be considered a spring. So how do we know this? Well, let's go to Genesis 2, uh, verses 5 and 6. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. So this is, this is still when God's creating. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work on the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Now, some people could interpret this that uh, this was during the time of creation. God didn't send rain yet. So nothing sprouted up. And then right after this, he started sending rain and things started growing. Uh, this could be, so if that in fact happened, then the first rain wasn't at the time of Noah. It would have been earlier. Uh, however, this would have been a really, really big rain, uh, the first rain of its kind at the time of Noah. So if in fact it rained prior to Noah in the ark, it could have been like sun showers or sprinkles no real torrential downpours and thunderstorms that we know of. Obviously, it could have happened. We weren't alive then. The Bible doesn't give us detailed record. 
but for this purpose, this is the first rain at the time of Noah of its kind, or the first real rain, because it, it, what it did was it drained the water out of the atmosphere. Uh, so we're going to keep going from there. Uh, it rain didn't have it. It didn't exist. There was no need because God was providing water that sprung up from the ground. So what, what, let's talk a little bit more about what was going on at this time. This is many, many years. When we get to Noah, God is seeing that people are, are just wicked. They're, they're not doing what he wanted them to do. They're getting out of control. They're not following him. They're being disobedient. They're killing each other. They're engaging in drunkenness and, and debauchery and sexual immorality. They're, they're starting to experiment with um, men and men and women and women and men and animals and women and animals and, and all this weird stuff that, that is not what God intended. And so they're, they're doing all of this. They're, they're murdering, they're lying, they're cheating, they're stealing. They are being wicked. They are behaving like their father, the devil. And so the devil rules this earth. Uh, we know that because Adam and Eve gave up their dominion of the earth when Satan came and, and took it from them. And so the devil is in charge down here. Now, we don't serve him. We serve God. So we are of another kingdom. We're not of this world. And we're here on a special mission behind enemy lines. We're trapped in this body. And there, the, it's a cell with no doors. We can't get out until we die. Obviously, we want to die. We want to go to heaven. But it's more important for us that we stay here to help others. It's not more important for us. It's more important for them that, that we stay here to help them. The best thing for, for us would be to die and go to heaven. But it's more beneficial for other people if we stay here. So we stay here and trapped in this body as long as we can. And we want to take care of this body as best we can so that we can stay here longer to help other people. Now, when God saw that allowing people to live for hundreds and hundreds of years gave them so much more time to become corrupt, he said, no, no, this is not good. We, I need to do something about this. What is he going to do? Kill them off. He's limiting their years. We're going to talk about that next week. So stay tuned for that. So he decided to do something about it. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. So this is uh, about the flood, the first part in, in, about the flood, verses 13 and 14. So one other thing that I want to mention here uh, that happened right before the, the God decided to wipe this out is there was a big act of disobedience. And I may preach on this another time or speak on this another time, uh, but there was a big act of disobedience with the, the celestial beings or the heavenly hosts. They uh, kind of in a way, rebelled against God. The, these aren't really angels. They're more heavenly beings. They're other beings. So they rebelled against God. They came down to earth and they had children with the women of the earth because they saw that the women of earth were beautiful. And they said, all right, we got to go down. Obviously, uh, you know what happened. They had children and uh, so the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose and they had kids. Now what did this mean? These were the Nephilim. They, these heavenly beings came down, had children with women, uh, earthly women, and then what were born to them were the Nephilim, which are the, the bigger creatures. Some say that there could have been some giants. Um, so nine, ten feet tall people. They were kind of supernatural. This is where Greek mythology comes from and the demigods that all kind of derived from the Bible. So it, it really did happen. It happened in the Bible. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say about that right now. But it, it did happen. You can dive more into that if you want. But it truly did happen. And so what happened with this, this big rebellion, uh, and God was like, this is not good. We have corrupt humans. We have... Uh, some beings that shouldn't be on the earth because they're a mix between the heavenly hosts that I have and the, the earthly humans, and the, we cannot have that. So God said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. We're going to talk about that later. Ver, uh, verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth, and in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. So now we're going to go 
Uh, that was a little detour of the first part of chapter 6. This is also why uh, God got so frustrated. We're going to talk more about that later, so I'll, maybe I'll alter the sermon a little bit if you guys want. Uh, for next week, if you want to learn more about the Nephilim, comment below and I can, I can uh, add that in next week. But for now, we're going to go to 6, 13, and 14, where God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence, and because of them, I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. And then it's this is how you are to build it, the size of it. We're going to talk about that in three weeks, so stay tuned for that. Uh, God says, I'm going to wipe them out. They're wicked. And why are they wicked? Well, because we've got all kinds of creatures running around here, the heroes of old, the, the disobedience. Uh, we just kind of went in on that. So God says, no, enough is enough. I'm wiping them out. Noah, you and your family, get on that ark, build this thing. I'm saving you. We're wiping everybody out except eight people. The rest are dying. The righteous would be saved. About a hundred years later, the first rain came upon the earth. All right, this is Genesis 7, verses 11 and 12. In the 600th year of Noah's life. Okay, so let me pause right here. Noah was 500 years old when he started building the ark. It took him about 100 years to complete this. So he would have been 600 years old when the flood came. 100, 100 years. Nowadays, we don't even live that long. People who are 70, 80 are falling apart. They can't barely swing a hammer. This guy was 500 when he started. Built it all by hand. No power tools. Okay? Took him 100 years. Then the flood came, and he still lived for quite a while after that, by the way. So, people lived a lot longer back then. Remember, we talked about that. Why? Hyperoxygen chamber. Um, afterward, they were contended. Uh, God limited them to 120. We're going to talk more about that next week. So, let's continue on. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the seventh day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth. So, all the springs in the ground opened up. Water started gushing out like crazy. And the floodgates of heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So what was the floodgates of heaven? Well, this is in Genesis. There are a few references in the Bible to floodgates of heaven. We've spoken about one before, and that was when we talked about tithing and giving, and that was in Malachi, so later, much after the, the flood of Noah. So the floodgates of heaven were opened in this time, and water poured out of the skies. The floodgates of heaven would have been that water chamber in the atmosphere. Okay. Then, then later, we talked about it before in Malachi, when God says, uh, test me in this and I'll open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing upon you that, you will not be able to, that there will not be room enough to store it. Some people say, well, that means rain. And it's coming down so that crops will grow and, and your barns will overfill and you won't have room to store it. However, yes, that's an analogy to the floodgates of heaven mentioned right here in Genesis when water poured out. And the reason that analogy was used is because people in the Old Testament would have known about Noah and the first time rain came down and how incredible it was that the floodgates of heaven were just opened and imagine this big blanket of water or like a balloon, a water balloon, uh, but with water on the outside and then you poke the hole on the inside all over and this water just collapsed in on the earth. Just truly, truly incredible amount of water coming down. And so it was the floodgates of heaven. And so when, when they mentioned that later, people knew that that's what it meant. It was that incredible. And so when they say, God is telling them, I will open up the floodgates of heaven for you. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to drown you all in rain. It means that that is how much blessing is going to come upon you for doing this. Not necessarily a bunch of water, but blessings. Whether it's uh, crops or, or um, in today's society and world, uh, your, your job or your life or your family, whatever. It's, a, it's uh, an analogy of reference to this time 
when the floodgates of heaven were opened for the first time and rain poured down on the earth. So this was that water in the atmosphere. Now, hopefully you've already seen those, but if you haven't, we'll put a card right up here if you're watching on YouTube so that you can see that sermon about the water in the atmosphere. Uh, what are we getting at here? God wiped them all out, saved eight people. Why did he do this? Because Noah was righteous. Noah and his family were good. They were the only good ones on the earth. God has done this before. P humans are wicked. Humans are bad. Why? Because our father, the devil, rules the earth. Why do I say that? We're children of God. Yes, we are. We are children of God if we choose to follow him. Otherwise, we're naturally born into this sinful, wicked world. And if we sin and do wickedness, we are mimicking the ruler of this world who becomes our father, the devil. And we don't want that. So we need to do better, be better. God has wiped out humanity many, many times. Not all of humanity, but you look at Saddam and Gomorrah, and, he, and God was telling Abraham, those towns are wicked. They're horrible. What, what were they doing? Well, we have examples in the Bible. Uh, sexual immorality. They were killing people, lying, cheating, stealing, experimenting with men and men and women and women and animals and all this kind of weird stuff that's not what God intended. And so he says, I'm wiping them out. And Abraham says, well, wait a minute. What if there are some good people there? And then they, they go back and forth. Okay, for 100 people I want. Okay, 50 people. Okay, 10 people. This, this, this. And so then God finds Lot and his family and says, all right, those are the only righteous people in that whole town. Get them out of there. And so then they're running away, and that's when Lot's wife looks back and, and literally turns into a pillar of salt because she wasn't supposed to look back. So then uh, we went from four people leaving to Lot and his two daughters. We're going to talk about that way, way uh, later, but it, it's something. So God wiped out the wickedness there and saved the righteous, just like he did with wiping out the whole world and saved the righteous. He took all the good animals, saved them, because God sent Noah the animals, and then he saved Noah and his family. When else? With Moses, this was after the Israelites left Egypt, God was like, these Israelites are always complaining and grumbling against me. They're grumbling against you. I'm going to wipe them out. Just, I'm done with them. And Moses is like, no, wait a minute, you can't do that. Well, then what will people say? You, you brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and just to die in the wilderness. And God says, don't worry, I'll start over. A brand new line with you. You are righteous. I will save you. You will have a new line of, of, of people and you will be my people and I will start over. And Moses is like, no, we, we can't. We got to keep with the Israelites. And God's like, all right, fine. But they're wicked. They're no good. And Moses is like, I know, but we're going to try to make them good. And, and they go back and, and forth and, and, and everything comes out. Bottom line. Humanity, people as a whole, we're, we're dumb sheep and we follow whoever wants to lead, whether that's good or bad, and without proper guidance, we're all wicked and we become wicked and the world or, or the, the town or the city or the nation becomes horrible and God doesn't want that. We know he doesn't want it. He, want, well, he wants to destroy it. What does that mean for you? It means you need to be better. You need to be like Noah, like Abraham, like Moses, like Jesus. Be holy. Be good. Try to, to lead people into righteousness. Don't follow the ways of this world. Follow the ways of God and be holy. This whole message is, is about that period of uh, the time of Noah and the first rain falling on earth. But it's not simply a history lesson. We're taking more from this. And it's that God wiped out humanity because they were wicked. And he spared the righteous. If today God looked at America and said, this is horrible. I'm wiping them out. Is he going to spare you? I really hope so. And you probably hope so too. Make sure that he would be righteous. Don't be self-righteous, but help other people, lead them, share this kind of stuff with others, inspire them to be 
better. So if you don't have that personal relationship with God or with, with his son Jesus, uh, you can. It's very, very easy. Simply pray to Jesus, ask him to forgive your sins, tell him you want him to lead your life, you trust in him to take control of your life and lead you wherever he wants you to go. You will no longer live for yourself. You will no longer live in this world. You want to be part of this other world, the heavenly world. We are not of this world. You can join in on that and become a believer in Jesus. Believe that he died for you. He became the sacrifice for your sins so you can go to heaven. That's the only way to heaven. That's it. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this uh, message and, and how we can tie it together and, and the analogy and, and everything like that. Lord, thank you for tolerating us here on earth. Um, as far as we know, you haven't wiped us all out uh, in, a, in a very long time. Yes, of course, we've had wars and, and probably purged uh, groups of people or nations or maybe even uh, viruses and plagues that have come upon the, the land to, to kill off wicked people. And so, Lord, we really ask that uh, your will be done and that if, if that is the case in any time of, of disease or viruses or, or famines or, or trials or natural disasters on the land, that, that you really would just wipe out the wicked and, and spare the righteous so that the earth could be renewed and reborn and, and nations can be rebuilt uh, without the hindrances of uh, the wicked. So. I ask that each person watching would really be inspired to become uh, like you, to be more like you, and to help others become more like you. That they would share the gospel, that they would share these words, and that they would join the body of Christ and help the kingdom grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for giving us your time today. I hope that uh, you found this message very interesting and, and inspiring. And that if you haven't watched the rest of the messages in this series, uh, that you'll go back and watch them and that you'll keep watching because we've got a few more left. So stay tuned for that. God bless.